Public figures like this don't come around too often. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things to know about Mr. Rogers. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at a variety of fun, little-known facts about this late great icon of children's television, which are sure to make you love him even more. Number 10. He got into television because he was unimpressed with it. You'd think that anybody who stars in a television show for decades would have a great love for the medium. But as Mr. Rogers once explained, quote, When I first saw children's television, I thought it was perfectly horrible. Since we're together, might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? So how did he wind up becoming a shining light of children's television? Well, rather than simply complain about the object of his disdain, he decided to do something about it. As he put it to CNN, quote, I went into television because I hated it so, and I thought there's some way of using this fabulous instrument to nurture those who would watch and listen. And he did just that. Number 9. He was an ordained minister. Life could have played out very differently for Fred Rogers. In 1963, he graduated from Pittsburgh Theological Seminary and became an ordained minister within the United Presbyterian Church. The next logical step would have been for him to begin preaching, but he'd been working in television since the early 1950s, and so even after he was ordained, he continued along the career path he'd started. Having already begun to hone his craft in children's television on the award-winning WQED public television series, The Children's Corner. Though he never wound up leading a congregation, with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, he found a flock of his own, one that spanned generations. Number 8. He was equally loved by animals. They say animals make great judges of character, and the way our friends in the animal kingdom responded to Fred Rogers' calm, welcoming, and gentle demeanor certainly supports that claim. Would you like something to eat, Blackberry? Perhaps his most famous non-human fan was Coco the Gorilla, who was reportedly an avid viewer of his program. In 1998, Coco actually appeared on an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as part of a series about looking beyond superficial differences and facing our fears. And what does this mean? Just, just a greeting to see what you've maybe been eating. Coco was thrilled to see Mr. Rogers and didn't hide her affection. And as a committed lover of animals, Mr. Rogers was also a vegetarian. Number 7. He was the victim of bullying as a child. Though it might surprise you given his famously slim frame, Mr. Rogers was actually chubby when he was young, and this apparently made him the butt of jokes in his own real-life neighborhood growing up. Similarly surprising, considering his career in television as an adult, he was also reportedly very shy, which only exacerbated the bullying. His peers were allegedly so merciless that according to Mr. Rogers and Me director Benjamin Wagner, young Fred Rogers would cry when he was alone. This was clearly a formative experience for Rogers, who, rather than become embittered, channeled his feelings into positivity and learned to look beyond the surface of others. But it's you I like, the way you are right now. Talk about an inspiration. Number 6. He did one TV guest spot as a fictional character. Mr. Rogers was best known for appearing on his own eponymous television series, but he also had a habit of occasionally venturing into other televised neighborhoods and series. The thing is, no matter where he went, he was always the same old soft-spoken, loving, and compassionate Fred Rogers, be it on Sesame Street or when you encountered him in person. Oh my goodness, that was meant by Mr. Rogers! There was one notable exception, however. In 1996, he played a character other than himself on Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. He played a reverend who, in a very unneighborly fashion, risks his church for reasons of vanity. What's going on here? Number 5. He wore sneakers for production reasons. Mr. Rogers' fashion sense is a big part of his image and legacy, and we'll be talking more about that later. But right now, we want to talk about those sweet kicks. Considering his old-timey attire, the sneakers always seemed like an interesting outlier, and people could not help but fixate on them, especially since he was always tying and untying them. So why sneakers as opposed to a more conventional and outfit-appropriate pair of dress shoes? It's simple, really. Fred Rogers thought work shoes or dress shoes were too loud for the quiet space he was creating and working in. Number 4. 
he wrote all the music for the show. A big part of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was the soothing music being played in the background. Though it was no secret that Fred Rogers played piano, what not everyone realizes is just what a talented musician he really was. He first began playing piano at the tender age of five and would go on to earn a Bachelor of Arts in music composition. He actually got his start in television working on such musical programs as Your Hit Parade. He used this passion for music and composition to personally write, with only a few exceptions, all of the music on his show. When you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. Number three, he reportedly responded to all his fan mail. Considering just how many lives Mr. Rogers affected with his television series over the decades, you can imagine that he likely received a whole lot of letters. There are many ways to say I love you. Most celebrities simply don't have the time to respond to their fans, while others have a stock response that goes out to make fans feel like they've at least been acknowledged. But not Mr. Rogers. As part of his daily routine, he allegedly sat down and wrote thoughtful, considerate responses to every single piece of mail he received. And he gives, opens his arms and he's like, it's great to see you again, neighbor, and he just gives me this big hug and it, it, you know. Though Fred Rogers is no longer with us, the countless letters out there must be a great comfort to fans and an enduring reminder that he truly cared. I like to take care of you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Number two, his mom knit all of his sweaters. Though the sneakers were a big part of his image, the sweaters worn by Mr. Rogers in every episode are truly iconic, arguably on par with his catchphrase, won't you be my neighbor? Just taken at face value, these cozy sweaters are adorable and endlessly endearing. But when you add to that the fact that they were reportedly made by his mom, well, doesn't your heart just melt? As he once explained in an interview, until the time of her death, Roger's mother would knit and send sweaters to friends and family every Christmas, and those are the ones he wore. You know, when I put on one of these sweaters, it helps me to think about my mother. Number one, he helped to save public television. In 1969, Mr. Rogers appeared before Congress to speak out against proposed budget cuts to funding for public broadcasting. One of the first things that a child learns in a healthy family is trust. He gave an impassioned speech about the virtues of public television, painting a vivid picture for skeptical politicians that made it incredibly hard for them to deny its importance. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. <clears throat> Looks like you just earned the $20 million. <laughs> the end result was that, just two years later, the budget increased by $11 million. That's not the only public cause Rogers championed, however. He similarly came to the defense of home VCRs and the home recording of programs in 1979. Why? Because he felt that people should have the opportunity to watch quality programming whenever they could find the time to do it as a family. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.